with his boots. Yeah, I bought them off a Dutchman, a fellow called Van Spanker. He says they're lucky. I pay for them with stuff out of my Red Cross parcels. I don't believe it. Lucky got three minutes to change them. What do you mean, change them? Shoo her! What's up? It seems I can't wear my own boots. It's ridiculous. There's not a better pair in the place. Change them. Take it easy. Listen, I'm the one that's going out of here. You're only going as far as the wall. The last time, Simon, get the boots off of you. So when we get out of here, I'm going to have to tramp halfway across Europe. Every German in cold is you here in those now. Get them off! Listen, it shuts up. Right up. It's right, Simon. Change them. It's time you were on your way. Where's Carrington? He's still studying the maps. Hey, Phil, let's go. Come on.
全然チョアレンジするはず Carter was quite clear about that, was he? That nothing went wrong with the escape from our side? Yes, sir. Becoming a nasty habit, isn't it, p e r r What about Carrington? Well, he's all right, sir. The MO patched him up last night before they put him in the cooler. You know, this makes the fourth escape attempt that's been scotched just because u l m a n and the guards knew exactly where it was going to happen. And then there's those three raids on our stores and gear. u l m a n made a pretense of it being routine, but it was only too obvious he knew where to go. Well, it could be he just got lucky. No, Pat, I'm not buying that. It's our security that's at fault. What about Carter? He must be pretty upset. It's the second time it's happened to him, isn't it? Yes, he is a bit browned off, sir. Where is it? Well, he's gone to see if he can get near Carrington in solitary. General Wrights, gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming to this meeting. Now, what I want to talk about is German security, which at the moment is having an unprecedented success in thwarting all our escape attempts. Now, this obviously concerns us all. I therefore want to put before you a report by one of my officers, Flight Lieutenant Carter. He was involved last night in the abortive escape attempt in which Lieutenant Carrington was captured because u l m a n and the guards knew exactly where it was going to happen. If you'll have a seat, gentlemen, I'll have Carter come in. Carter? Yeah? Flight Lieutenant Carter, gentlemen. All right, Carter. I want you to tell these officers, without comment or elaboration, exactly what you've told me. Well, sir, just after r a p p e l I made my way across to the solitary confinement cells to see if I could speak with Lieutenant Carrington. I managed to get his attention and he came to the window. But as he did and I began to talk with him, a l l m a n came up to me and asked me what I was doing. I said that I wanted to find out what had happened to Lieutenant Carrington. And he said that he'd been caught attempting to escape. And then he said, we had help. And I said, well, you just got lucky. And he said, no, Lieutenant. Not luck. German efficiency. German efficiency? Yes, sir. But you know, this is time. Thank you, l i t t l e b i You are suggesting, Colonel, that there is an informer among us? I'm sorry, gentlemen. Yes, that's exactly what I am suggesting. We uh, appreciate the warning, Colonel. But if there is a British informer, I do not understand how we can help you. Well, I did not say that there was an informer, merely that there might be. Nor did I suggest that he would necessarily be British. But surely, Mr. 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 even if there is a traitor, your implication that this man could be a Polish officer is totally unacceptable. General Wrights, I have no wish to regard one of my own officers as a traitor. I appreciate your attitude, but the fact remains that it is possible. Now, in our position of authority and responsibility, we have no choice, in my view, but to commence an investigation into all our officers. You do not understand the Polish character. My country has been overrun, violated. There is hatred and a fierce determination in the heart of every Pole that knows neither caution nor fear, only the desire to revenge. A Polish traitor is not possible. Not a Frenchman! Or a Dutch! Nevertheless, gentlemen, I am going to commence an investigation into the entire British contingent. I would ask you to do the same with your officers. We made our way back across the roof. Straight back to our quarters? Yeah, and the Poles went back to theirs. And how long was it before u l m a n and the guards turned up at the quarters? Three or four minutes. They searched and then left? Yes, they didn't find anything. 
And the following day, Orman said nothing more to you than you've already told us? No. no just exactly what I've told you. I'm quite sure. Absolutely certain. <sighs> well, we've been over and over that plan time again, and we can't find anything wrong with it. Except Orman knew exactly where we were coming down. For the fourth time. Therefore, we must assume that there is an informer, and we carry out an investigation into the entire British contingent. Well, surely you're not suggesting it's one of our chaps. I mean, that's ridiculous. It must be one of the French or the Poles. Well, don't you think that's exactly what the other nationalities are saying at this moment? Look, Simon, I want you to help Pat coordinate and carry out this inquiry. Yeah, I, I know that it means riding roughshod over a lot of sensibilities, but that can't be helped. All right? Yes, sir. All right, Pat? Yes, sir. I carry on with it. going on? Hmm? There's something brewing, but I'm damned if I know what. What I've seen of your conniving ways, Downing, damnation is relatively assured. But don't touch that, the ink is still wet. Mm. What exactly is it you wanted? I doubt if my heart would stand a confession from you. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, Padre. Not really my denomination. Eh? I was brought up as a Presbyterian, actually. Mm. Well, I've always subscribed to the notion that the Reformation was a spiritual disaster. You just cemented my argument. But seriously, Padre, there is something on. Well, can't you give us a clue? Up to now, darling, I've not been vouchsafed the blessing of divine knowledge. Well, I don't know. I mean, everybody's behaving in the... Mo Could we have a word with you, Padre? Yes, certainly, Pat. You're not going to tell me what this is all about, are you? No. No. Well, it's just a thought. Hardly. I'm afraid there's definitely been a security leak. We've got to check everyone and we're going to need your help. Certainly, so long as it's peaceful and there's no third degree. You're sure about that? Hmm. And after a pell? Well, we played bridge until lights out. And you spoke to no one other than conventional bridge jargon? Well, that's about the size of it, yes. All right, that's it. Thanks. Right. Next one, print. I'm sure you realize the purpose of this security checkup. It is important, and I'm asking for your full cooperation. I want to examine every word and action of yours from 3 p.m. on that day. All right? Does this mean I'm under suspicion, then? At the moment, we are all under suspicion. Do I take it that everyone who knew about it has been or will be screened? Yes. May one ask who will screen the screeners? Well, Colonel Preston was the first officer to submit to screening by myself and the party. Yes. We also put Pat through it, too. I'm sorry. Shall we get on with it? Now, what did you do immediately after the meeting on Friday? I was a bit under the weather. I went to the dock for a couple of minutes, and then I gave a hand with some of the forging. Now, who did you speak to? Only Merriman. There was no one else there. What did you talk about? How the hell do I know? Yes, we talked about Proust. Merriman had volume nine passed on from one of the frogs. Merriman's a great reader. You didn't mention the meeting or the plan? I'm not stupid. You're quite sure. Damn it, Simon and Phil are my friends. I'm not likely to spill anything involving them. Now, after last appell on Friday, who did you talk to? I don't know. Who did you talk to? I didn't talk to anyone. What did you do? I was reading. What were you reading? Mind your own damn business. I'm sorry, but a man must have some privacy. We all understand that, but this is necessary. I was reading my letters from my wife for about the 400th time. Afterwards, did you speak to anyone? No. Haven't you noticed? No one talks after they've been reading their mail. Well, let's look at Saturday morning. What did you do after a pell? I went for a quick wash. Who was in the washroom? Wilkins, uh, Sniffy Harris, and I think Goldbraith. No, uh, Zatke. Did you talk? Not a word. No one did. Then? 
I'll have to think about that. Well, take your time, but try and be accurate. And when were the documents finished? Only on the Friday afternoon, about four, I think. Who dried them? I did. No one else touched them, Simon. I'm quite certain. All right. You were in the washroom? Yes. You were all alone? Yes. You did the documents yes. yourself? You dried them yourself? Yes. Was the door locked? You... No. But you didn't leave them? I mean, not even for a second? Please, Simon, do me a favour. Nobody leaves anything, ever. I had most of the reports before a pell, sir. So far, if there is an informer, it definitely isn't one of our officers. Good. But hurry it up, will you, Pat? It'll look well if we could be the first to show that our house is in order. Right, sir. Ben? Try this, sir. Sure. God in heaven, what is it? It's English ersatz coffee. I thought it was rather good. Uh, what exactly is the ersatz derived from, Bren? Well, it's actually made from uh, <coughs> wood shavings. And that burnt toffee stuff that Gibbs got in his parcel. Yes, sir. Yeah. General Rowitz. Colonel Preston, I wish to speak with you, if you please. I have concluded our investigation into the Polish prisoner personnel. I have to report to you that we have found a traitor among our junior officers. He will be dealt with tonight by court-martial. I will inform the French and Dutch senior officers accordingly. General, I'm deeply sorry. Grant, Charter, can I have a word? The informer is a Polish officer. Well, what happens now, sir? And the Poles can be a cagey lot when they want to, won't they just close ranks and keep it dark? Well, not this time, no, not altogether anyway. They're going to hold a full court martial tonight. A court martial? Here in Colders? They'll, they'll just pretend it never happened. I don't think so. The Poles are very conscious of their honour and. Uh, the general rides in command. I can see it both being very thorough and very correct, but... but... Pat, have a word with the Polish escape officer, will you? Tell him that the other nationalities are insisting upon having observers at the court-martial. I'll have a word with the Dutch and French senior officers about it. Right, sir. Poproszę pierwszego świadka, porucznika Cartera. Dobrze. Flight Lieutenant Carter. Please. Please sit down. Flight Lieutenant Carter, in order that there may be as little misunderstanding as possible, you will be questioned in English. The tribunal understand English, as does the defendant. All I ask is that you speak slowly and distinctly. Hmm? May it please the court. I respectfully submit that as a serving officer of the Royal Air Force, Flight Lieutenant Carter is under similar obligations to our own officers and is automatically under oath. Of course. You understand? Yes, sir. Flight Lieutenant, are you acquainted with the defendant, Lieutenant Sortishik? 
No. I've seen him in the courtyard and at Appel, but I don't think we've ever spoken. Yes. Twelve nights ago, that is on the night of April the 13th, you and one officer colleague now being held in solitary confinement were engaged in an escaped attempt with two members of the Polish forces, Lieutenant Slavomir Rapowski and Captain Zygmunt Baldushovich. Yes, that's correct. Right, Lieutenant Carter, will you please tell the court exactly what happened during that escape attempt? Well, as had been previously arranged by the British escape officer, Lieutenant Carrington and myself had a rendezvous with Lieutenant Rapowski and Captain Boldushevich outside room 27 on the top floor of the Polish quarters. We had certain items of equipment with us, and the two Polish officers... ...mitigujące okoliczności, wierząc, że sąd będzie ustosunkowany łagodząco. I za pozwoleniem, proszę sądu, ja nie widzę nic, co by miało jakąkolwiek styczność ze zeznaniem oskarżonego, że on zdradził swoich kolegów oficerów. Dziękuję. Proszę wysokiego sądu. Zdrada porucznika sołtysika nie jest i nie powinna być powzięta jako nieprawda. Zdrada porucznika nie jest i nie powinna być powzięta jako nieprawda. Mitigating circumstances are such in which even a serving officer would not behave normally. In 1939, Lieutenant Sautyshik was heavily wounded and sent to hospital, to a German hospital, where Gestapo, on several occasions, proposed to him collaboration. Each time, Lieutenant Sautyshik has refused. Why doesn't he make his own plea? Uh, in the Polish court-martial, it is not allowed for the accused. The council must plead for him. The Gestapo has threatened him that the wife and child will be arrested and tortured. After several months in hospital, the ill-treated and worried about his family lieutenant has agreed to collaborate. The wife and child of the lieutenant were arrested by the Gestapo. Lieutenant Sautyshit was forced to treason under a threat of his wife and child. And here was the mental break of the Lieutenant Sautyshit. On one side was the worry about the safety of No, I, don't, I don't smoke. I don't, don't. Na tym ja kończę moją obronę. Dziękuję. They will either go out to consider the verdict, or if they are all agreed, they will make the, how do you say it? Pronounce sentence. Uh, pronounce the sentence. They found him guilty as charged and sentences him to death by hanging. The sentence will be carried out tomorrow night at midnight. They have no right to ask for the death penalty. Those circumstances mitigate beyond question. Well, the verdict was unanimous. Oh, for God's sake, all they've got to do is tell the Germans their informer has been discovered and have the poor devil transferred. I know, sir, but they won't listen to reason. I've tried to have a word with Jan, but he now says it's a purely Polish matter. They've closed their ranks. Well, I'd better have a go at uh, General Wright's. Any idea where he might be? Well, he should be in the courtyard at this time, sir. He usually walks around five or six times before the Poles collect their food. Pat, see if you can find out where they're keeping Sotiji prisoner, will you? Thanks. Spróbuj się wstawić w jego położenie. Żonaty jesteś? Nie. A on żonaty. Żona dzieci w gestapo siedzą. Spróbuj odmówić. Wiesz, co z nimi się stało? General Wrights. I've had a full report of the court martial from my observer. I find it very hard to accept your sentence. It was the only possible sentence for a Polish officer, confirmed as a traitor. What would you have done? Could you have stood by while your family was subjected to torture? Colonel Preston, you do not understand. 
The officer betrayed his comrades. Whatever the circumstances, such an action cannot be tolerated. General, I beg you to reconsider that sentence. Can't you have the man just quietly removed? That sentence is not justice, you know. It's murder. There's no other word for it. It is a purely Polish matter. We have our pride, our honor, and our personal sovereignty. And that is all we have left. That little we guard jealously. Rather looks as if you drew a blank. Yes. I found out about Soltiji. They've got him under guard at, in a room at the end of the corridor. They're using their own quarters for the hanging. Find our Catholic padre, will you, Pat? I want to see him in my room at once. That's right. Come in. Colonel, sir. Hello, padre. Sit down, will you please? Thank you. The informer has been discovered, Padre. He's a Polish officer. He's been court-martialed and sentenced to death. I understand he was given the opportunity of taking his own life, but he refused. Well, he would do. As a good Catholic, he could not take his own life without committing more cursed sin. He's to be hanged at midnight. Oh, they cannot do that. That's inhuman. It's the law, Padre. Martial law, at any rate. It is not God's law. No, well, I don't agree with the sentence any more than you do, although the man is guilty. Then I, too, am guilty. What? Colonel, I am the only Catholic priest in Kolditz, as you know. The man Soltijic confessed his sins to me. And you said nothing? I am bound by my priesthood, Colonel. No priest will break the seal of confession, no matter what the circumstances. You must understand that. That... That man told you of his treachery to his fellow officers and you said nothing? He told me of his predicament. Well, don't you think that treachery, especially in a place like this, is a crime? I have nothing to do with crime, unless it be a crime a man commits upon his own soul. I render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but a man's life is God's, not Caesar's. <sighs> They're your values, Padre. I'll take it you'll do anything you can to save this man's life. Of course I will. Well, it's quite obvious that I cannot go directly to the Commandant. Such an action in the eyes of the other nationals would jeopardise not only my standing, but the integrity of the entire British contingent. Now, I've attempted to dissuade General Rides, and I've failed. No appeal is possible unless it is perhaps that from a man of the church. Now, will you go and see General Rides at once? I will, Colonel. I know nothing more vindictive, more intractable, more unmerciful than man's so-called honor. And these men are Catholics, Christians. 
What happened? I saw General Riots and his senior officers. I tried to plead for mercy for the man Saltijic. They just wouldn't move. They're determined upon killing him in the name of Polish honor. What they want is vengeance. Christ have mercy upon them. Well, that word mercy is foreign to their ears. They're betraying their faith. Later in the week, they'll ask me to absolve them from their sin. And I shall have to ask, are they truly repentant? So the sentence stands? Yes. It's to be carried out at midnight. They've drawn lots as to who shall do it. Well, they also cast lots for his garments, I wonder. They've given me permission to hear his confession and give him communion between 11 and 12. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to prepare myself. Padre, who is going to hear your confession? In this place, sir, only the Almighty. Sometimes I wish he was just a little nearer. I've been unable to stop the Poles. The sentence is going to be carried out. What about the Padre? All he's managed to do is to get in to hear his last confession. That means I've got to get to the Commandant. You chaps better get cracking and get me arrested, haven't you? What's that? It's my coffee ingredient. Look, I shall stand well back about it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Colonel Preston, you're not in your quarters. What are you doing here? Please tell me. Help, man, I must see the Commandant at once. That's not possible. I haven't created that little diversion for my own amusement, you know. It's imperative that I see the Commandant. You will see the Commandant when I have determined the real reason behind these tactics. Wait here. The Oberst all here, I'll be
You've put me to a great deal of trouble tonight, Colonel. I can therefore only assume that your request to see the Commandant is valid and urgent. Come with me. Uh, Harper, I'll be obliged if I'm taken there under escort. Why? I'll explain to the Commandant. Begleiten Sie den Oberst zur Kommandantur. I must be left entirely alone with the prisoner. That is not possible, Father. Tsompovija. I insist. Tsompovija. Zostov. A man's confession is between himself and his maker with a priest as intermediary. No one else. But my orders you were may to wait guard outside Sortizic. the door. Otso Hodji. Hodji. Otso Hodji. Hodji. We can't leave him alone. Now, please. Hodji. That's why I have to stand up. Time. Have mercy upon this man. Father. It is our law. It is not God's law, sir. When you face. have finished, one of my officers will escort you back to your quarters. There are doors to be unlocked. I am not leaving this man. Father, I cannot I permit you. I am not you. leaving, sir. Captain Kowal, midnight. I shall expect your report at 0.15 hours. Nomine Patris et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just try to get your thoughts clear toward God. Admit your sins. Tell God that you're sorry. Hope for his mercy. <laughs> Marek. Do not be afraid. <laughs> Keep your mind on God and his mercy. Do not be afraid. For a late visitor, Colonel, what is it, please? Quick, quick. Unless some action is taken immediately, one of the prisoners who has been court-martialed as an informer will shortly be executed. There has been a court-martial in this Sondalaga. The name of this informer? Soltizic, as you well know. You have searched the British quarters for any escape attempt? Yes, sir, nothing. Colonel Preston, I cannot believe 
that a court martial has been convened in this castle without my knowledge, nor that a man can be executed by his fellow prisoners. That man will be hanged in an attic above the Polish quarters at midnight unless something is done. May I remind you of your obligations as commandant? You are in no position to remind me of my obligations, Colonel. That man's life is your responsibility, as is the life of every prisoner in this camp. Now, that isn't just a clause of the Geneva Convention. It is your duty as an officer of the Wehrmacht... Colonel Preston! Lieutenant Soltysik was giving information to all his fellow officers because you and your officers threatened disgusting reprisals against his family. Colonel Preston! I cannot permit you to make accusations of this sort. It is not the policy of the German Wehrmacht to use subversive methods on prisons of war. It may not be the Colonel policy Preston. of the Wehrmacht. If you permit, sir, I'll explain. The Gestapo put pressure on this man, Soltysik, before he was transferred here. When they offered us his services, we could not refuse. Hauptmann, that does not excuse you or the Commandant from attempting to save that man's life. Now, he has about 15 minutes left. For God's sake, get him out of there. Pretty close. I mean, they'll just string him up when they hear that lock coming. Now, the Poles are almost as by the book as the Germans. If they say midnight, they mean midnight. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Nehmen Sie mir die beiden in Haft. Was gibt's? Was ist los? Was ist los? Was gibt's? Aufwachen! Aufwachen! Weichen Sie die Tür ein. Mr. Palmu, go ship, go ship, go ship, go ship, please. You cannot take this man. But it is your orders, no, father. He has betrayed us all. You no. shall not do this thing. No. No. The more gun, the silver. Midnight. If you have managed to stop the hanging, what will you do with him? That presents me with something of a dilemma, Colonel, which does not concern you. However, I propose to have him sent to a hospital as under acute nervous strain and in need of care and attention. And then...
The Polish prisoner Soltychik has been found, sir. I have sent him to solitary confinement pending your instructions. Thank you, Harper. Was there any resistance? A token, sir. One man has been sent for treatment, a Pole. He was assaulted by the British Padre. Padre? I believe it was actually he who physically stopped the hanging. Hauptmann, you will call out a full guard and call an emergency appeal. In front of the full complement of prisoners, you will arrest four British officers and sentence them each to seven days solitary confinement. Sir. Colonel Preston. We have talked tonight of nothing but the disturbance in the British quarters. For your involvement in that affair, I will sentence you to seven days solitary confinement without privileges. Thank you, Commandant. And the Polish court martial, sir? There has been no Polish court martial. Good night, Colonel. 